Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I ask permission, firstly, to submit to the record a statement by NFIB about the impact the 30-hour rule is having on small business uh, and uh, in support of H.R. 2575 to restore the traditional definition of full-time within the ACA. Without objection, so ordered. You know, just last week I visited with the superintendent of a school in southern Indiana in my district, uh, in Salem, Indiana, and she was distraught, joined by other members of her school board. Uh, she was distraught that this new requirement it's not only leading to administrative costs, which are burdening the school whose budget is already constrained, uh, she's concerned about the future, the future of uh, her substitute teachers and the ability to manage personnel. Uh, she's concerned about the ability to schedule said teachers in the classrooms at the right time. Uh, she's speculated that uh, she may have to ask those teachers to come in late while students are in empty classrooms uh, so that they can keep those teachers below the 30-hour threshold. And very recently, one of her best employees actually left, citing this specific provision of the Affordable Care Act. 39 Indiana school corporations have sued the federal government in reference to this 30-hour provision because the undue financial and administrative burdens it puts on them. I've talked to representatives from Indiana University who said they'll cut the hours of 1,000 employees over the coming year to comply with this act and this provision. And of course, we've heard the compelling testimony today from the largest community college system in the country, a community college system known as Ivy Tech out of Indiana. Mr. Snyder, as president of Ivy Tech, uh, we've already heard from you today the impact of this 30-hour provision. Uh, it seems clear, at least from your perspective, that um, uh, this impact has not been exaggerated. It's not speculative. It's very real, and it's impacting your operations here and now. Uh, has the delay of the employer mandate for one year, and to any significant degree, made it easier to deal with this 30-hour provision? Well, there's a uh, pr proposal. The part of the law is the look-back provision, so you actually have to keep the data now. We started keeping it at October 1st, so the administrative burden on this um, is taking place as we speak. What about um, the changes that were discussed here today? There were some discussed uh, to solve or, or at least salve uh, any problems uh, that uh, are related to the 30-hour provision. Do you think that those, uh, those proposals that were put forward, have you heard anything here today that would they would entirely solve the challenges you're dealing with. No, I, I think your, your proposal is probably directionally the way we have to go. The, the current law is both prescriptive, very prescriptive, and vague at the same time, so that people in our situation don't really have a uh, compliance, full compliance understanding. And then I think the other thing which was brought up uh, by your colleagues, that the 40-hour the uh, benefit of health care is something that has uh, uh, you know, throughout the land, and I think that employers, and having spent you know decades in the auto industry where competitive pressures are enormous, employers are going to great lengths to preserve 40-hour health care for everybody and trying to minimize the reduction in the benefit. And I think this actually is uh, counterintuitive, and that is making the 30-hour week the threshold is going to force everybody in that same bucket, and the additional cost for us, which is $12 million on a $25 million current spend, are uh, unachievable. Thank you. Um, Mr. Troutwine, uh, you're here obviously representing the retail industry today. Maybe you could speak to the retail industry and, and whether the employer mandate has helped uh, in a measurable, significant way addressing with the challenges uh, created by this 30-hour provision. I think it is a huge, huge challenge, Congressman, and we congratulate you on, on your legislation. We support it. With the additional, the, er, the tight margins that I mentioned earlier in the retail industry, it's very hard for us to take on additional labor cost. And this question of managing people to a new threshold is something that is, is very uncomfortable for our stores and restaurants. So from our standpoint, it's a big problem. Thank you. I, you know, I hope we can move forward. We can address this in a bipartisan way. I'm proud uh, the bill that you referenced uh, that uh, I've introduced 
uh, with uh, Representative Kelly, Representative Olson, and Representative Wahlberg. Uh, gets bipartisan support moving forward. And uh, we need to restore this traditional definition of full time under the Affordable Care Act. And I yield back. 